everybody. Welcome to Square Off. Liz, our Christmas office parties are pretty tame affairs here, but some serve up the perfect prescription for corner office canoodling. Mm, just imagine a party with an open bar, no spouses, some sexual tension thrown in for good measure, mm -hmm. and, well, you know what can happen. Yeah, the next thing you know, that the uh, it's the boss and his secretary having a closed-door meeting, and then the gossip spreads like wildfire. Yeah, let's face it, office affairs are not a great idea, despite how tempting they could be during the holidays. And we're going to talk about those temptations later on Square Off. Canada's police chiefs are okay with Ottawa's planned changes to the production of medical marijuana, but the nation's doctors aren't. The Canadian Medical Association accuses the government of abdicating its responsibility as regulator, leaving doctors to blindly hold the bag. Ottawa is scrapping the system of individual permits, changing the rules so that only companies meeting security requirements can grow and sell the drug. The Conservatives argue that with 26,000 permits handed out over the past decade, the system's become unwieldy and resulted in unintended consequences. We're joined in studio today by Alison Murden. She's a medical marijuana user and spokesperson for law enforcement against prohibition. In Toronto, Matthew Murna. He is the man at the middle of a controversial court ruling which potentially could have led to the legalization of marijuana. Matthew, what does the government's plan to privatize medical marijuana production mean to you? Well, I mean, I won't be able to grow my own. I currently have a court-ordered exemption which allows me to grow my own medical marijuana in my home. I do it responsibly and with the full knowledge of people around me. So the, the changes to the program right out of the gate would affect people with personal production licenses. And at, let's be honest, I'm not in the medical marijuana program. I can't get access to this program. I don't see it changing. In fact, uh, the minister's press release exact, says exactly that. It says they intend to maintain access. We have less than 1% of doctors in this country signing applications. I don't see that changing anytime soon. Allison, do you think you could survive if you had to rely on a supply of government-sanctioned medical marijuana? Absolutely not, Liz, and so many Canadians could not, because A, affordability is a key factor. The government is proposing, if I can peek at my notes, that we go from $1.80 to $5 a gram right now that patients are paying, upwards of $7.60 to 2014 when they finally settle to $8.80 a gram. That is not only outrageous, that is a slap in the face to all sick Canadians who choose cannabis as medicine. Uh, Allison, you suffer from MS, correct? Yes, I do. And uh, how much marijuana would you need to, 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 to take in during the course of a day? Well, I actually have one of the larger prescriptions in the country, and I'm upwards of over 100 grams in a day. 100 so, grams in a day? Yes, but let me explain that, Mark, because, again, I was given 32 pills and 2,000 milligrams of morphine for 18 years. There is nothing, I repeat, nothing else for me. So, as far as cannabis goes, there is no LD level, no toxicity level. Mm -hmm. it, you cannot die from it. My doctors are 100% in agreement with this. I have gotten down from my 32 pills a day, and I'll almost off my thousands of milligrams of morphine completely due to the use of medical cannabis and due to having enough. So bottom line, as I was saying earlier, we eat it in cookies, we drink it in tea and soups, we eat it in puddings, we eat it in um, uh, muffins, you name it, anything we can cook and you can cook, you can use cannabis with. And that's what patients are doing, Mark. Mm. Okay, Matthew, the head of the Canadian Association of Chiefs of Police say the changes are necessary to reduce the risk of abuse and exploitation by criminals. Uh, don't you think the government had to do something to eliminate the potential for abuse by the criminal element? Well, I think the, the abuse is slightly made up. I, it's a, a, I wouldn't even know the number, the percentage, but I would say a very, very small minority of people would abuse the medical marijuana system, just like people would abuse Oxycontin prescriptions or other prescriptions that are signed that way. Um, the, but it is correct. The program was built pretty shoddily to begin with, so they built it on a poor foundation, and the Conservative government have gone out and built a whole new entire program for themselves. Matthew, um, the, the pot that the, the government is going to grow. Um, have you tried this before? And, uh, you know, how the, big a difference is there? I mean, is it like rot gut liquor to premium liquor? Uh, give me a comparison here. Um, I can only go by what people have told me. I have not used the uh, government medical marijuana. I have tried to grow their medical marijuana seeds before, and compared to other seeds, they are absolutely garbage. Is this the same? Uh, not the government. We're talking about the, the, the private um, uh, growers. Yeah, we, we, so that's, we, that's what they're going to grow? That, that stuff? Well, I mean, the private growers, it looks interesting. 
saying that they might be allowed to import seeds. They might be allowed to like sort of work with Agriculture Canada to bring in seeds or bring in cuttings. Uh, it's very unclear how that would work, but they could also get um, seeds from Crown Corporation or from the Crown, sorry, which is the government in this case. Um, which means they would be growing the exact same strain that Canisat or these other, the current government supplier would supply to people. Um, I don't know where you're going to get strain variety if you're going to get it just from the government. So they're going to have to look around Agriculture Canada to change some of its rules to allow the importation of marijuana seeds for these companies. Mark, it's also more important to realize for people a couple of things. One, that 70 percent of patients in this country grow 25 plants or more. So bottom line is we have a, an issue with, you know, uh, uh, large amounts of medicine out there already. Now, when people grow for themselves, they don't look into the market in the street. They don't sell it as a rule. They use it as, them, as their own for medicine like people like myself do. Yeah. I don't want all the pills, so I'd much rather keep the cannabis than sell it, for example, than be without. So people like us, you know, at street, I don't know why the police are making such a big deal out of it because most patients are not illegal growers. Uh, Allison, I certainly sympathize with your situation, your health situation. We have about 30 seconds left. I just want to ask you, you know, there's thousands of people that have uh, different medical issues. They have to buy their medicine from uh, pharmaceutical companies. They have to pay whatever they're charging. So this sounds like you want a sort of a, a special deal. No. You know what, though? I was talking to my lawyer, Professor Allen, this morning morning and I'd like to leave everyone on this note. First of all, if you have a personal production license in this country to grow your own medicine and grow cannabis as medicine, you will not lose it because we will fight for that. We will fight to keep that because that is in the Constitution. That is a constitutional right that we will never give up to grow our own. Alison Merton and Matthew Murdoch, thank you both for joining us. Merry thank Christmas. you for enlightening us and uh, yeah, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.